This show is coming to you live on February 7th, 1998. If you're seeing it at any other time, consider it a video time capsule of what was going on in this point in history. Hi, I'm Nicholas Snow, and today on Promohomo.tv, queer television comes out of the closet. This is me in 1998. With me on the show today, I'm very proud to welcome back veteran march organizer, out comic, and there's a, many other things that could be used to describe Robin Tyler. Welcome, Robin. Hey, darling. Oh, yes, we're gay. We're going to shake hands. Give us oh. a kiss. Just a little bit. Mm. Okay. Yes. Well, welcome back. Thanks. And this is me in 1994. But without further ado, let's go to a video clip that was taped approximately four years ago. Look out into the, uh, look into a camera. Yes. And tell people to come out, <laughs> in, in, as only Robin Tyler can. People know that you are gay and lesbian anyway. Your closet does nothing but trap you in a prison. It makes everything in your life a lie. It's not a matter of flaunting. If two people walk down the street holding hands and they're straight, it's called sharing. If we walk down the street holding hands, it's called flaunting. If you are not ashamed of your lover, if you do not want to hide who you are and your right to love and your family relationship, if you want to have respect and start having a healthy self-esteem, then you have got to come out. You've just seen clips from my public access show, Tinsel Towns Queer, and those episodes have in fact been in the closet. And now they are stacked over there on that counter and you will be seeing them here on promohomo.tv. I've chosen this particular episode because it's very powerful. It demonstrates the types of conversations activists have been having for decades that have created the world that we live in now. Promohomo.tv starting officially today, August 1st, 2016, but decades in the making, is a non-stop flow of compelling multimedia content available everywhere and our purpose is connecting the circuitry of humanity. Built upon decades of multimedia entertainment activism, this is Promohomo.tv, connecting the circuitry of humanity. This program is distributed in association with Pink Banana Media. I'm your host, Nicholas Snow, openly gay in the media since the mid-1980s. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Promohomo TV and on Facebook.com slash Nicholas.snow. For their generous support of this episode, I would like to thank Desert Regional Medical Center, Desert AIDS Project, Lulu California Bistro, and 849 Restaurant and Lounge. Promohomo.tv is proud to spotlight many important organizations and causes, including Palm Springs Pride and the LGBT Community Center of the Desert. You may also find me in the pages of GED Magazine, GayDesertGuide.com, The Huffington Post, and other media outlets. For this and so much more, visit Promohomo.tv. And now, on with the snow. <laughs> I mean show. Now here we go, from the closet, an archival episode of Tinsel Towns Queer. And yes, I've gone from being Tinsel Towns Queer to everybody's promo homo. My dear, I'm the tinsel town queer, and Hollywood will never be the same. Yes, I'm the tinsel town queer, but have no fear. I don't even want to name your name, but join with me, we shall proclaim. Gay or straight, we're all alive. Hetero, by bag or die. What's the secret all about? It's time to all come out. This industry 
transcends the globe. So the truth we must disrobe. Join with me, we shall unite and turn the darkness into light. We'll turn the darkness into light. We can turn the darkness into light. Let's turn the darkness into light. Hello and welcome to Tinseltown's Queer, because it is, and so am I. How about you? If you are, you can come on my show as a guest and tell the world about it. I refer to my show lovingly as a Queen's version of Larry King, because it's often live with timely guests, timely topics, and viewer call-in, and today is no exception. This show is coming to you live on February 7th, 1998. If you're seeing it at any other time, consider it a video time capsule of what was going on in this point in history. With me on the show today, I'm very proud to welcome back veteran march organizer, out comic, and there's a, many other things that could be used to describe Robin Tyler. Welcome, Robin. Hi, darling. Oh, yes, we're gay. We're going to shake hands. Give us oh. a kiss. Just a little bit. Mm. Okay. Yes. Well, welcome back. Thanks, darling. Your turtleneck has turned up in the midst of our hug. Just, oh my God, I want to straighten you out. Okay, is that okay? Yeah, that's, that looks right. good. Okay. That looks of course, good. you're queer, so you look perfect. Well, last last time I was on the show, you told me I could dress better. I did. Also, yes. oh, you wore a jacket. I wore a jacket. I, I did. I did wear jeans today. My makeup artist doesn't let me wear jeans when she's in town, and uh -huh. she wasn't in town today. I've rarely seen somebody gay carry polyester as well as you do, but no, it, 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 <laughs> I think it photographs well. It's wool, darling. I know. Look, I know it's wool. <laughs> uh, uh, for those of you in the audience, I. I want to I want to go immediately to a four minute well actually a four year old clip from the first time Robin was on my show, and it really speaks to the power of Robin Tyler and her message. And then we have a really big announcement for you. But without further ado, let's go to a video clip that was taped approximately four years ago. Look out into the uh, look into a camera. Yes. And tell people to come out, <laughs> in, in, as only Robin Tyler can. People know that you are gay and lesbian anyway. Your closet does nothing but trap you in a prison. It makes everything in your life a lie. It's not a matter of flaunting. If two people walk down the street holding hands and they're straight, it's called sharing. If we walk down the street holding hands, it's called flaunting. If you are not ashamed of your lover, if you do not want to hide who you are and your right to love and your family relationship, if you want to have respect and start having a healthy self-esteem, then you have got to come out. And it does. You have to make sacrifices. We're not saying you won't make sacrifices. I made a sacrifice. I was on ABC television. When I came out, I was starring, you know, and say, well, you're big in television. You could afford to do it. Nobody can afford to do it. You know, but we're the only movement that talks in terms of affordability. Uh, the black movement in South Africa didn't say, can you afford to fight apartheid? They said, you can't afford not to fight it. And I'm saying to you, you can't afford not to fight homophobia. If you stay in the closet, then you're as much a part of the problem as the religious right, because you are allowing them to force our love back into silence. And therefore, you become a problem to us and to yourself and to the 10 to 12 percent of the children that are going to grow up to be gay or lesbian. So come out. I swear to God, it's one step and you will feel so good and so healthy and so free. You brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> um, well, <coughs> I'm glad you're not wearing contacts, are you? Oh, um, look at you crying. Well, Give me a hug, mm, babe. All right. Um, it's just so. like wonderful appeal to the viewing audience to come out and it's more important than ever isn't it it's very important and uh, it's it's important I, nobody can live their life a lie and just from self-esteem and we're going to give them a wonderful opportunity to come out if they if they'd rather come out among a million people and which you know, is the big announcement the yes. Millennium March on Washington for equal rights announced to the public this week yes in the year 2000 spring of 2000 so Tell us, what is the Millennium March on Washington? Um, well, it's not the Promise Keepers, is uh, it? Thank I, God! They're going back there on like 
they're going back the day after New Year's, like 2000 is New Year's, and then they're going back the next day. But that's big football day, so who knows how many of them will show up, you know? I'll see if we see if they really love God, if they choose God over football in this case. Uh, this is the Millennium March in Washington for Equal Rights is um, uh, really the fourth gay march on Washington. It started out to be, you know, 1979, the Gay March on Washington, and then 80, uh, 87, the Gay and Lesbian March on Washington, 93, the Gay Lesbian Bi March on Washington, and now it's 2000. And so we didn't want to say the Gay Lesbian Bi, Transgender, Queer, and people that are still questioning March on Washington. You, can't, you know what? I mean, I can't get it all on a T-shirt. I had to gain 20 pounds to put everybody's rights on the T-shirt, right? So even though we wanted to be uh, all inclusive, we thought we would say the Millennium March on Washington for equal rights. And uh, we, we know we're talking about our community, and our community's expanded, and I think that's wonderful. Two of the big organizations behind the march yes. are the Human Rights Campaign, headed by Elizabeth Birch, uh -huh. and the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches, uh -huh. headed by Troy Perry. Uh -huh. And you and Troy and I were in a room in West Hollywood a week and a half ago when they were looking at 50 years of activism in Los Angeles, yes. which is when you said, oh, I think I'll be able to make a big announcement on your show, and here you are making it. Yes. Um, but Elizabeth Birch says, uh, this march will set a tone for a new century. Uh, full equality under the law will be our achievement in the new millennium. One of the things you say is, you talk about assimilationism and uh, how... I did in that press release? Well, no, not in this oh, press okay. release, but in general. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are comfortable today thinking, oh, we have our rights, but the fact is, as you say, we don't have any rights. No. W w clarify this for people. Well, I have to, you know, I have, can I just go back for like two minutes if sure. I promise not to be boring in history? Oh, you couldn't be boring. Okay. Oh, this is Robin darling. Tyler. <laughs> but darling, you're not my lover. <laughs> you're boring again. Feed the dog. Get out. The Your lover is off stage. Is she boring? <laughs> is she boring? <laughs> not for a okay. minute, she says. Um, okay. Um, in the 1970s, by the way, that's Diane Olson, and Diane's grandfather was the first Democratic governor of California. So uh, I think that that's good. Maybe someday we'll have another Democratic governor of California. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, in 1979, um, I called for a march on Washington when I was in Minnesota, uh, performing at the university there. And they formed, uh, I was just really angry. I just got a lot of laughs, and then I just got angry because of some referendum. And they formed the Minnesota Committee for the March on Washington, the first march. And that went defunct. Of course, everybody got together excited. Everybody fought. What's new? Dish, dish, dish. And uh, after that, uh, a fellow named Harvey Milk decided, oh, yes, OK, San Francisco will begin to again organize this march. And unfortunately, Harvey didn't make it. But we did have the first march on Washington. And it was for, uh, um, for gay rights. And we expected 10,000 people in 1979, or 20 if we were lucky, and we got 100,000 people, and we were thrilled. The organizations didn't want us to march. I think it was NGTF at the time, National Gay Task Force, because they felt that if we showed a bunch of radicals marching in the streets, we wouldn't be able to negotiate with the, with the government. So in 1987, we decided to march on Washington again. Um, uh, because, uh, you know, we still had no rights. And, and at I that was point, there. I was at the two marches, 87 yeah. and 93. And how old were you in the in the 79? Were you in the crib still or what? In, in 1979. Junior high? I was year a what? junior in high school uh -huh. in 1979. Well, I was working my tush off, <laughs> trying fighting for your rights. <laughs> well, so. And thank you. I appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. I feel like your Jewish mother. <laughs> <laughs> so in 87, we had resistance to doing a second march from our own community because AIDS was just becoming, people were realizing by 87 the, the enormous effect of AIDS and what it was, and they thought that by doing a march we would take away from raising money for AIDS, but in fact is that march uh, uh, is what uh, made AIDS explode as far as, as far as organizing around it. And, uh, I was know. at the, uh, the protest at the FDA right. in which ACT UP chapters from around the country and other activists uh -huh. closed down the FDA building in protest. Yes. And, uh, it, it was all over the news everywhere, uh -huh. and it radicalized the way that drugs get tested in the FDA. That was one of the actions. Uh, right, at the 87 March, right. so it was really important. However, we had notified Time and Newsweek that we would be there, and of course, Time and Newsweek 
uh, didn't cover that 87 March. And at the time, there was a million people. According to the Parks Department, there was only two of us, but because they always like to underestimate. But we look so good. But we look so good, you know. Fabulous. And uh, fabulous. Um, but the uh, the in 87, um, Time and Newsweek said that we hadn't notified them that we were coming, so that we, you know, they didn't write about us. Well, we were at that time the largest civil rights demonstration in history. So it's hard to miss a million of us in Washington. But they didn't write about us. In 1993, uh, we wanted to do a march yet again. We're not going to, you see, we're not going to give up. I mean, they must understand we're not going away, no matter how adorable we seem. Um, <laughs> and we wanted to march again. And um, uh, at that time, people wanted to organize for Stonewall to celebrate Stonewall. And so there was resistance from the Stonewall committee. Because they thought it would compete they with thought it would their com big rally. Yeah, with their, well, it was, right, their celebration. And we kept saying, but, you know, we can celebrate all the wonderful things, the fact we've met each other, the fact that we're out. There's a lot to celebrate, well, but we still don't in, have rights. In fact, the March on Washington helped build momentum for the Stonewall celebration. Yes, yes. But I mean, still, you know, on one hand you celebrate, on the other hand you look at the reality that we have no rights. So we did this march, and again, um, I co-produced that stage. I, produ I, pr I pr pretty well much produced all the stages. And at that stage, um, uh, it was interesting, because in 83 we could only get... Uh, uh, the major stars were Whoopi Goldberg, in 87, Whoopi Goldberg and Robert Beretta, who, Robert Blake from Beretta. Those were the two, you know, stars that would come on in 87, right. although we tried for a lot. In 93, we got uh, Sybil Shepherd, and Melissa Etheridge. Um, Judith Light. <laughs> Judith Light, uh, the Indigo Girl, Serene McCallan, um, uh, Martina Navratilova, to name a few. So we had a, an entire celebrity section. Um, and even so, it was difficult getting straight celebrities uh, to come out to our march, I mean, to, to come to it. We, so we have gotten someone calling us, though. Uh -huh. So uh, let's go oh, to the okay. phone, because I don't want to leave them on hold forever. OK. And, that um, could be Barbara Streisand accepting. Oh. Who knows? <laughs> Hello, you are on the air with Tinseltown's Queer. Oh, hi. How are you? Good. Hi. How are you? Um, I had a question. Mm -hmm. Um, my question is, I was wondering, how do you go about getting the different celebrities for the different marches? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I, call, I call their managers or their agents. We pretty well know, um, we, you know, we know who manages who, and we call their managers and we call their agents. So Why, why is it so difficult to try and find people that are straight? <laughs> to find them in general? Because we're in Hollywood, darling. No, you mean really, be to find them to, to appear for us? Yeah. Um, I think it was difficult then because, I mean, you couldn't even find straight people that wanted to take gay roles in the movies, right? So I think it was difficult. I don't think it'll be so difficult this time. I think what's exciting ab about it is um, uh, this time, uh, you know, uh, Chastity Bono is out, so we'd like to invite Cher. Uh, we certainly would like to invite uh, Barbara Streisand. She's a gay icon. Um, I don't think it will be as difficult because it was easier, easier for straight uh, uh, members of our community to come out around AIDS because AIDS was a health issue. And, uh, but we don't think we're going to have a problem having megastars at this march for, for our rights. Thank you for your call. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Tinseltown's Queer. I'm Nicholas Snow, the Tinseltown Queer. My guest is veteran march organizer Robin Tyler. And this week it was announced that in the year 2000 will be the Millennium March on Washington for Equal Rights, produced by Robin Tyler, backed by the United Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches, the Human Rights Campaign, and many other organizations. Right. What are the predictions for the turnout for this march? Well, I just want to say something about 93 is, is that the... Uh, we had huge turnout in, in the celebrity section. For this March, I called up uh, Elizabeth Birch from the Human Rights Campaign, and I said, Elizabeth, hi, it's Robin. How many uh, civil rights do we have? And she, without hesitation, she's an attorney, so they usually hesitate. She said, none. You know, and it's true, and we don't have the right to uh, marry. They're even willing to change the Constitution. We don't have the right to serve our country. Um, except for maybe hors d'oeuvres, I guess, but we don't <laughs> Hi, darling, we're serving our country. No, but I mean, Hormel, you know, uh, Mr. Hormel can't even get, uh, as an ambassador, uh, get approval, or hasn't yet, let alone in the military, the military right. Um, we don't have the right to uh, um, work. You know, you, so, mentioned right? the, you mentioned the military, just to interject a point. Uh -huh. uh, my father was killed in the Air Force in the 
the end of the Vietnam War. My uncle is a retired colonel from the Air Force. So I say to you, if my family values are not in accordance with military service, right. whose are? That's right. This right. Is, no, there's no so, right. So you're talking on the phone with Elizabeth, and we and, have no rights. And we have no rights. And I, and I said, I would like to meet with you. And, I would, you know, and I've worked with Troy Perry for many years. For, for, I remember when Troy, um, they, they burned his church down. I'm not a Christian. I'm Jewish. But they burned his church down. And I was this uh, little Jewish radical lesbian feminist. And I saw them burn. The gay church gets burned down. So I went to, he had a service on the street. This is in the 70s. And I went to the street to this, my first Christian service ever. And I walked up, and I said, you don't know me. My name's Robin. Tyler, but I want to support you in whatever you do. And so Troy has really uh, uh, been a tremendous leader and very important in our movement. I think this, it's a huge organization. I think, oh, you know, it's excellent. It's I think there's something like 50,000 members, and they get a quarter of a million people coming to their services. So w Troy and I said, in, I, I, he came over one night, and I served him turkey in uh, 1977, I think. And I said, Troy, and after this, because turkey has tryptophan, so it relaxes you guys, right? And I said, Troy, why don't we, they have having a gay train go across the country, let's get on the train and speak everywhere it stops. And we did. We got on this train and there were 300 gay guys and two women that wouldn't talk to them, two lesbians. And <laughs> I think, no, I'm sorry, there were six lesbians that wouldn't talk. Remember the separatist era? Yes. And, uh, and, and every time the train stopped, no matter what little town, Troy and I would get out and speak. And, um, and, and if no one was there to greet us, the guys would get off the train and run around to meet us. And the headlines in the 70s screamed, hundreds of homosexuals come to meet the train that Reverend Perry's on. Well, they were on the train. They weren't just coming. You know. <laughs> so I've worked with Troy a long time. And uh, what do we predict? I think that um, I'm hoping that this will be, I, hope, I know this will be the largest march of its kind. The millennium is ours too. We have no rights. You know, we're the only, we're the only minority group in this country where people find it's acceptable that we can't work, that we can't serve a country, that we can't get married, that we can't keep our children. When they gave that... And that many of our children are killing themselves because of self-hatred promoted right. by the radical right. When they gave that, le the, 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 that the lesbian case where the lesbian had a child and, and the judge in Florida gave it to a murderer and she instead said I'd right. rather give it to the husband who's a murderer rather than her, then the idea of... Uh, you know, that we can't even have our own children, let alone, although we have great, you know, we've made progress, these two guys in New Jersey that adopted finally uh, between them. But there's all these things coming up in the millennium as ours, and, we, and, and we've been lulled into a f something. We, we've won two rights. One is we have the right to consume. They know we're consumers now. We are and niche marketed. Niche out. marketed. So, you know, we've yes. won the right to consume. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have, uh, and that's one right. And the other is because there's been cultural acceptance, because of, of Ellen DeGeneres, bless her, I love her, uh, but because there's been somewhat cultural acceptance and now we're, we're, we're Time and Newsweek wouldn't cover us in 87. Mm -hmm. Since 93, we were on Oprah and uh, every major show and television and we're characters. But, I, but it's an illusion. There's somehow there's an illusion that there's safety. Well, there's no safety for us unless they start counting violence against us and unless we can right. work. So, so the millennium's ours, and we expect it to be one of the greatest, uh, uh, largest marches in, in the history. Well, we have another call. Let's okay. go to the phones. Hello, you are on the air with Tinseltown's Queer. Yes, hello. How are you guys doing? Good, Hi. how are you? I'm okay. Uh, my name is Jason, and I have a question for you guys. I've fallen in love recently, and I've been um, dating this guy for like three and a half months, and everything's going really good. My question is, how long are you supposed to wait until you move in with each other? Well, well let, uh, <laughs> Robin, Robin shows up the next day with her U-Haul. Yes, that's. I'm a lesbian, you know. I move in right away because I don't want anybody to think I'm tacky. I, it's supposed to be as long as you feel comfortable. There's nobody telling you the rules. Who made up these rules? How long? How do you feel? Do you want to move in with him? Um, I actually, I disconnected the caller. Oh, okay. But, but um, it. I agree with you. It's a personal choice, and I frankly think that the longer you wait before moving in together the better because, uh, you know, make sure you have a solid foundation. Make sure that uh, you know each other. Make sure that you're basing your relationship on the reality of your interaction and not uh, on your fantasy of the future. Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> no, well, I was, truth I would be sitting here thinking about Bill Clinton, if you want to know something. Uh -oh, uh -oh. No, 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 no. It's not, I'm not saying a bad thing. You know, I think they should send Monica Lewinsky to over to negotiate uh, with Hussein. I think she'd be excellent. Um, I'm thinking about him because that the issue is about sex between consenting adults, if in fact it happened. And so when you look at fundamentalists that are so rabid, that are willing to attack anybody, it's not about the privacy of what they do in private. Then you have uh, attack any heterosexual or the 
head of our country or the president of our country, you know, which I think is basically a, a, response, a homophobic response. I think they're rabid that we're, that we're out of the closet and fighting for our rights. And so now they'll attack anybody on the right to privacy between consenting it's a, adults. It's a really scary issue. Yeah. Speaking of the right to privacy, yes. um, I want to preface this question because when I, when I bring it up, I find people confuse my question with outing. So I'm not talking about outing. Uh -huh. um, let's look at the whole, the whole phrase, silence equals death, uh -huh. okay? Um, I agree that coming out should be a personal choice and mm -hmm. that it's not my right to take that choice away from someone else. But I also believe, regardless of your reason for being in the closet, the fact that you're in the closet has extremely negative consequences for the greater good. It promotes the ignorance, that promotes the homophobia, that promotes in the fact that we have no rights. So my question to you is, do you think that there is an accountability? All right, I'm a lesbian. No. I'll say it. Okay, okay. <laughs> do you think? All right, there? I am. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to deny it. All right. <laughs> do you think that there is an accountability associated with people's silence? And do you think that the, that one reason is better than another for staying in the closet? Mm -hmm. For example, one woman is staying in the closet because she could very, uh, very likely lose custody of her children. Whereas person X is staying in the closet because she might lose rating points in her nationally syndicated television show. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what's interesting? When I see people of wealth or privilege or stardom, and you know, I was signed on ABC television and made them take the morals contract out, and I start on the Craft Comedy Hour, and the day after we were on that, ABC nationally, I was, uh, the same night I was on the news, uh, as a vowed lesbian doing jokes on Anita Bryant. So I understand the sacrifice you make in a career, which I'm really glad. You know, you really sacrifice nothing to get your freedom and to be open. But uh, so I, I have to look at these stars and, and say to myself, they're not only in the closet, and we all know who they are, the ones that have great privilege, but they don't contribute anything either. They do some stuff for AIDS, but they really don't contribute to our movement. And so I, I have, I, you know, I get angry because it's one thing, you know, I can't defend their hiding, but let's assume they have the right to hide. I would like to see more contributions come. I would like to do a thing, closets are for rent, okay? And I think that what we do is if anybody wants to stay in the closet, they have to pay a gay tax if they're rich. And <laughs> I know some people think of that as extortion, but we just like to think of it as a donation to our movement. Um, we're but yes, is we're it different than the lesbian mother in Mississippi with the kids? Right. Of course, of course. Okay. Now, um, I, want I, to one last I wouldn't, thing. we have some time. Okay. Right, but say your last thing and then I'll, I'll ask you another question. All right, I want to say that, you know, if I had a wish list of who would come to this march or who, who we're going to invite just from a celebrity point of view, I would love to see Elton John there. And I would love to see Elton John on stage singing that um, song from Lion King. Uh, can, about, you, can we feel the love tonight? Can we feel the love? And then you have all the, uh, you have gay parents come on, right? Gay and lesbian parents uh, with their children. Always know I mean gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, okay? Just take too long. But all of us come on with their children yes. and all of these, these kids and their gay parents and then have the parents of the gay parents. So you have three generations of people coming on stage. And that's what I would like to see. I would like to see us reflected as families. And I would like to see us reflected as, uh, you know, I, I, wa I want them to see us in our entirety from now on? Um, I recently premiered a civil rights anthem at the Cinegrill uh -huh. in uh, a performance, uh -huh. and um, I want to start lobbying you now <laughs> to, to sing it at, at the Millennium uh, We'll March. sing it now. Go and, ahead. Um, no, not now, but I'm going to make sure Drums, this, drums, I'm gonna, please. I'm going to uh, make piano. sure. <laughs> Look here. I brought a symphony orchestra in. <laughs> Ladies Probably and gentlemen, Nicholas want. Snow. Um, but we're in the last th three minutes okay. of the show. And... Um, this person, I'm not saying that I have any personal knowledge of whether or not she is a lesbian, but uh -huh. I know that it is discussed in the media that she could be. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go ahead and name her name, Rosie O'Donnell. Uh -huh. All of her people are in town right now. Uh -huh. um, if she is a lesbian, I would say she's not in, but she isn't out. Uh -huh. What's your opinion on that whole issue? You know what? I'm not looking to a uh, Rosie O'Donnell and or, or to anyone that's or to any. You know, we could be sitting here and name everybody that we think is. 
And it doesn't, I'm looking to the Millennium March 2000, I'm looking to ask, asking Elton John and Ellen DeGeneres and, and uh, gay icons like Barbara Streisand and, and Madonna, and I, I don't mean to be all party, I mean we'll have speakers and that stuff, but I'm looking to this wonderful world that is, so I don't look at what hasn't opened up to us, I look ahead and I say what has opened up to us and how many people okay. are on board, and, uh, and that's it. But I don't, I don't struggle against anybody that, uh, I don't struggle against anybody else anymore I just I just I have the wisdom to know the okay. difference we have like 15 seconds how do people reach you to get involved in the Millennium March um, they can uh, well right now they can uh, uh, they can call me and I'll HRC, put in touch with you the Human Rights Campaign HRC based in Washington, right now DC. and David Smith is taking calls okay. right now until we set up a March line actually the, the phone number and then we got to close the show for the Human Rights Campaign is area code 202-216-15 Four, seven. That's David Smith, the communications director. Robin, thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you, darling. And here's uh, Nicholas Snow, your Tinseltown queer, <coughs> and, and Robin We're Tom. out of town. We're out of time. Tin Tinseltown lesbian. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'll see you next time. <laughs> we shall proclaim gay or straight, we're all alive. Hetero, by bag, or die. What's the secret all about? It's time to all come out. This industry transcends the globe. So the truth we must disrobe. Join with me, we shall unite and turn the darkness into light. Built upon we'll decades of multimedia entertainment light. activism, this is promohomo.tv. Connecting the circuitry of humanity. This program is distributed in association with Pink Banana Media. I'm your host, Nicholas Snow. Openly gay in the media since the mid-1980s. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Promohomo TV. And on Facebook.com slash Nicholas.Snow. For their generous support of this episode, I would like to thank Desert Regional Medical Center. Desert AIDS Project, Lulu California Bistro, and 849 Restaurant and Lounge. Promohomo.tv is proud to spotlight many important organizations and causes, including Palm Springs Pride and the LGBT Community Center of the Desert. You may also find me in the pages of GED Magazine, GayDesertGuide.com, The Huffington Post, and other media outlets. For this and so much more, visit promohomo.tv.